Hello and welcome, Mr. Ryan. To that today's episode of the Dungeon Crawl, episode twenty two zero. It's the big two zero, which is uh, not that big. Good of timing that is, if you think about it. No, well, it would have been better timing if our twentieth episode was on the thirty first. But you know, it's whatever. So as we did with the tenth episode, this time around, doing the same thing, kind just of waffling. reflecting on stuff that has happened. I don't know if we should do this every tenth or oh, just like. Boy. On 10, and then 20, and then 50, and then 100. Ooh. Or just whenever we're feeling, I don't know. Yeah, might just throw it in there. But Ryan said he was uncomfortable because he doesn't like not being prepared. I like being prepared, man. Whenever you I, if I feel this. unprepared I gave you some for, criteria to talk for about work things or to... study or school, I'm like, I'm freaking out over here. I don't know what you, I'm doing. You feeling prepared for your final test of undergraduate life? Not really. It's going to be a pretty easy one, I think. Wait, you said not really to being prepared. But it's gonna be. Oh, easy. no! I feel. I think I'm prepared. Yeah. <laughs> I think he gave the most unprepared face to me ever. Which I might add right now that we are looking at each other through a webcam. Whoa! The technology. Which kind of gets me on this sort of you know mindset of things that we should start doing to improve the podcast. This being mm-hmm. one of them because whenever we. You know, I I was at his place visiting for D and D. Yeah, we've done it twice now. Had, yeah, we know that we have a great podcast because we're right there. Which yeah, like that's always that's yeah. always the best ones. And I can see his cat now. <laughs> now you can see so the crap I gotta fun. put up with whenever we're recording. No, it's fine. Does he do that every time? Yep. Now he's just laying down. Good boy. Stay quiet, JD. <laughs> oh. <Nope. laughs> he <laughs> heard you. Do as I say. Yeah, he did. He loves me now. But I'm glad we're not doing any on North Arcana right now. Because we've been. Should we? We can pull it no. up. No. No, and I need Jeremy a break. Crawford, is that his name? Yeah, I need a break from Jeremy Jay's today. Like, Please no. Yeah, they're easy much. episodes to do, I will admit. They are. And I mean, it's good fun <laughs> checking out what they what they are, because otherwise I'd probably never look at it. Yeah. Oh, I mean, we could do that too. I never thought about pulling up the old Buzzsprout and talking about things from there. I'll have that. I'll have that ready. Just a chat about it. Looking good. Buzzsprout is what we use for our podcasting service. Yeah, that's uh, that's what uploads our stuff to the old Spotify and the Apple places and things of that nature. Yeah. But I suppose I'll apologize for this episode because it's going to be a little less D&D. Everybody leaves. Nobody is listening. <laughs> so, I mean, we, we've, we've deviated a few times <laughs> here or there. Yeah. And for those of you that are sticking around, uh, we just wanted to take today, take this episode to reflect again on you know the past 19 episodes that we've had and now 20 and chat about things that we'd like to improve going forward and you know like a little preview into maybe a new year's resolution podcast based type of thing we will probably have an actual episode and you know yeah we're thinking for that episode we were streaming together the other day and we went off on a tangent about the year's best and worst crap and whatnot and I don't know, it lasted like an hour. So like, hey, this would be fun to talk about on the podcast. The <laughs> Let me the apologize for that stream because I was so off focus the entire <laughs> time. <laughs> I completely realized at the end when we left that I was kind of pretty annoying on that stream. <laughs> no, no, it was, it was good fun. I had a fun time. And I think okay, that, that's good. a good segue for um, if you guys are like, like our podcast and don't know that we stream every Thursday, sometimes Wednesday if things come up, uh, me and Braxton will stream on Twitch together. On Melisir's mind, M E L A C I O U R, and Nesugiru is his. N E S U G I R U. Yeah, that's right. Question. And uh, I stream every so often, and he does every so often, but every Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> but every Thursday, we, we try to play some games together. You know, I, I would stream more because I've been playing. Uh, <laughs> we're already getting off topic, but I guess it's on topic. I've been playing. Um, Finally, actually playing Black Desert Online. Oh yeah, you're talking about the other day. Finally, actually playing. I have After prior to this the character creation. I, yeah, I had 15 hours in character creation wow. only. I'd never actually played the game, and now I'm a level 23 long. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, you went with the monk. No, that's not the monk. Is that what you said, monk? Long. L a h n. They have like some sort of pendulum blade. It's cool. Yeah, like you it. like uh, you like glaive blade type thing, pendulum things. There is no actual like everybody in that game is either an assassin or some sort of tank. There's never really anybody that's kind of like. Is a there a, is there an archer ranger? Yeah. Okay, I think that's what when I briefly played, 
I'm pretty sure that's what I did. I think I played the trial or something. You play it with me. I got too many. I, I can't play another you MMO right now. Play it with me. <laughs> MMOs sink their teeth into you. Yeah, that's, that's this is one of those games. Um, yeah. That's just what I've been doing. I want to get more into video games again because as I got out of school, I realized that I had less and less time and was unable to really get into things. Yeah. So, I don't know. Well, that's just MMOs I'm to are, myself. I think, a great tool for D&D because I, I can't count the amount of times where I was playing Warcraft like a year and a half ago and I would do a quest line like, this quest is sick! And I write and it down. plagiarizes. Yeah, I'd write it down and then I'd use it as inspiration for a D and D quest. Use it as plagiarism for D and D. Just don't 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 take their like um, their fetch quests. You don't want to give your players fetch quests. Those aren't I mean, fun. Well, if you can give it a, a meaning behind it, but it's just like, hey, I need you to go kill seven elk because I need some food. That's not fun for players to go. Well, do. I did kind of a fetch quest from one of my first sessions. In That's a sense. different though. Is it is literally a fetch quest, which kind of leads me to say, how can you improve dumb quests like that? And, you know, people who love fetch quests, I'm sorry. We'll find a purpose behind it. Well, there I, is a purpose I, behind I it. I don't think fetch quests really exist in D&D, which is good. Because, I mean, again, like if the example I just used for MMOs is going out in seven encounters. Because think about it in D&D terms. You were to go out and kill seven creatures in seven separate encounters and cut out their organs, whatever, and bring them back. That's just not fun for, unless it's a, you know I guess it's, unless it's a okay. Let me tell you, it's sound boring. Game. The town that they're in, I've yeah. mentioned this several times on our podcast, uh-huh. it has an arena. They need monsters for the arena to fight for See, the I don't orphan children. That fetch questy. But they had to go fetch goblin parts and, yeah. and weapons and goblins. I mean, if you use the term fetch, sure, maybe it's a fetch quest. But I mean, it's, it's literally to its core a fetch it. quest. There's more to it than that. But it's still a fetch quest. I don't know. It's, like, it's I not need an MMO a, crappy fetch quest. I need X for Y. Yeah. Fetch quest. I don't know. Improve your quests, people. Even if it's yeah, a fetch one or... We'll have a quest podcast. Why have we not thought of that yet? <laughs> Should I write that... it down so we don't forget? <laughs> yeah, that's the first time. Uh, so that's something else that, you know, as we should transition back to how to improve the podcast... Um, because I'm sure we want to save a lot of the conversation about games that we really enjoyed for the episode that will come out on the 31st uh, on New Year's Eve, which is kind of crazy. Whoa. We, wor- we work around the clock for you guys. This is something we take very seriously. Mm-hmm. We have a backlog of like 80 episodes done already. Whoa, I don't know Hearing this that. one actually six years ago. That's pretty crazy. It is crazy. It's actually I don't think true. Black Desert is... Actually, it might have been. <laughs> I think Six years been. ago? Uh, Black Desert has been around a while. It got yes. revamped recently, though. It's just like a, like a reshade though. Yeah, it's pretty. I like it. My PC can run it. <laughs> we should start, you know, for like my first um, on my list here of things that I want to improve mm-hmm. uh, that is in my noggin, not on piece of paper because I don't do that. Um, you know, planning ahead a little bit more because we are very good at the the structure that we do right now, which is you know we we play Dungeons and Dragons with our our friends and then we go podcast 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 <laughs> that's how we end works. every session is everybody's winding down about to hang up the button and ryan goes oh podcast yeah because we usually play on saturday sometimes sunday and we try to get out the podcast on tuesday so we want to try to get it out in between then um yeah. and you know there can be a disconnect if you start recording podcasts you know two or three episodes ahead and i think we noticed that when we first started doing it we had a buffer of an episode i think yeah um, and I would get so antsy because I just recorded a podcast and one's coming out, but it's not the one that I'm really excited about, but that was kind of a fun feeling. Yeah. You know, something's coming. People are excited. Yeah. And the, um, one of our friends who, uh, listens to a lot of podcasts and, um, we would like to do our social media stuff, but you know, they have their own lives and how dare, how I, dare they not, not no. beg to um, our, you know, but no, it'd just be really great wills. if um, you know, me and Ryan got better at social media. That's another thing we should improve on. Yeah, yeah, we're pretty bad at it. I made a post last week. Oh, I made like, one three weeks week. ago, I think. Yeah, we're working on it. I'm sure you guys <laughs> are blocking us because of how much we're putting out there. Yeah, muting us. We're posting way too much. Yeah. But, you know, maybe being an episode ahead, Ryan, I don't know if you're interested in getting back on that train. Yeah, we could give it a shot. And record another episode right after this one? Ugh. Ain't no uh, time. That's another thing. It's time is tough. Time is tough. 
Because we D&D &D and then we about. work and we stream. Yeah, and acting we... like we're actually busy, but we're not. We're busy but bees. We I'm, I... I'm busy, but I could be doing a lot more. <laughs> I mean, I feel like that's how we always could be, but you got to take care of yourself too. No, nah, but I, guess, I mean, I, you always hear the, the people that make it in whatever business always working their ass off. Well, yeah, I, there's this speech that I don't know if it was necessarily a speech, probably was uh, that Griffin McElroy gave to one of the universities that he, I don't know, enjoys or went to or maybe not. Maybe it was just a guest there. I don't remember. Uh, Griffin McElroy is uh, one of the McElroy brothers or the McElroy family who make the, um, the Adventure Zone. My brother, my brother and me, things like that. He gave a speech about how terrible he was to himself while he was recording and you know getting into the podcast scene even just the media scene because he started out uh as a writer for some sort of article uh, over video games and if you don't if you've never been a writer before for people that post articles on the internet it is one of the shittiest jobs because you have a quota of things that you need to yeah. bust out which is why you see such shitty articles all the time and you don't get paid too much yeah, it's some underpaid either intern or somebody who works part time busting out articles so that they can put ads on those articles and make yeah. money. So he was doing something like that and um, eventually just hated it so much. But he transitioned towards uh, where he created Polygon, I think, with a couple of his brothers and some other people. And he was spreading himself so thin while he was writing the first part of the Adventure Zone, um, the balance arc that any moment he had at home because he worked at home which is a tough thing to do he was just thinking about writing for it or he was writing for it and he dedicated every inch of his time for it and thought he was kind of invincible like that day nine speech if you've ever heard it yes yeah day nine's got some great speeches where he realized he didn't need to sleep <laughs> it was very yeah, similar give to that, that give that a watch if you guys haven't check out yeah and just watch all of day nine's uh speeches and highlights and stuff but that's a particularly good one. I don't know what you would Google, but day nine, not needing to sleep speech. I don't know. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, someone else, something like that. He's a hilarious man. But it was something very similar to that. And I've <laughs> never done or had a work ethic like that in my entire life. And it makes me wonder either why or why not. Maybe you haven't found something you're super passionate about yet. Ryan, I'm. I play video games. I play guitar. <laughs> I now have a drawing tablet. I learn Japanese. I watch anime. We do a podcast. I play D and D. Yeah. One of those things has to be my true, absolute passion. I don't know. You're you're still pretty young. Oh man, Maybe I'm turning twenty three. Ryan, we're turning twenty three. We're that's basically still, that's, no, that's we're that's basically dead. Young. Basically, we're basically dead? dead. Yeah, that's a scary thought. Isn't I mean, what's after twenty three? I can't even count twenty four. But you know what's funnier than 24? What? You're letting down our, our listeners here, Ryan. You don't know what? the meme? No, I don't know memes. You know this. It's, I don't know memes. I'll give you a hint. It's SpongeBob. I, 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 uh... 25. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Ryan's fake laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he can pull it out anywhere. But for oh, you, Ryan, careful, buddy. if there's something on your brain that you think that you would want to improve with podcast in the coming futures uh i mean i'd like to uh have some serious stuff I and mean, we, we kind of already do with under darkana but like i don't know like we could have a like we just some of the quest series or maybe one that's some of different biomes or different i don't know i like having series because it allows us to focus our brains a little bit harder on something i want more more, more, more monsters okay um i don't know something that specifically to prove on would probably be like maybe diversifying the content type. I guess, but let's let's follow that series path for a little bit. Okay, let's follow that, it. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to have? You know, this is going to be my analogy for it. Okay. Okay. Uh, I watch anime weekly. Really? Some people, yeah. <laughs> and what I mean by that is seasonal episodes that come out during the week, and I watch I'm several shocked. several series during the week. I'm shocked. Some people. <laughs> only watch one series at a time and they consume oh, only that yeah. series i guess that's what, so, that's what i'm doing now because i'm you know, i'm not caught up on like anything yeah did you watch episode i sorry. haven't watched it yet though. No, okay I good okay not. sorry I we'll not get on that tangent um <laughs> i'm watching <laughs> he's like, right now he's very excited he's about to watch episode 19 which those of you who have seen it know um but do you want to have series 
that start and end. Like when we start a series, it doesn't stop until we're done with it. Or do you want to have several series that we add episodes to oh. segmented? So we've got a monster manual, like well, how we've done now, our monster yeah. manual series. I mean, something like that can be in. an ongoing, yeah. Yeah. But I'd like to have a more structured one that's like kind of like when we started the podcast, we had almost like the thought process that a new DM, a new player would go through starting a campaign, like session zero, creating a character, role play, whatever, and then session one. Stuff like that. And that's kind of like what I mean, where it's, there is a clear beginning and a clear end to it. Okay. So like I, the, one of my favorite podcasts, and I've talked about a few times, the last podcast on the left, they do kind of like serial killers and horror stuff. And they did a whole big series on like the big serial killers, like Jeffrey Dahmer and all that. And they did one or two podcasts dedicated to these guys. And then they were done after, I don't know, like 40 episodes of covering all these different guys. Damn. Yeah. That's a, that's a big series. Yeah, I mean, we can definitely do something like that, and then just take breaks on those, you know, milestone episodes. Yeah, um, that we have. I don't know what we we just got to find stuff that we're able to talk about for that much. Well, it's finding an idea in D and D and just trying to expand on it, and mm -hmm. really just think about the point of view of that the creation of that, or just brainstorming things for it, like creating a good villain and Ooh. how how you lead up to that first meeting. Mm -hmm. or you want to make sure ways... they're not able to be killed in the first encounter yeah <laughs> that's well, not a good villain it's true D D is crazy there's some stories you never know what's going to happen but things. yeah yeah so the process that's why, like... i think curse of straw does such a great build up of i think i tweaked it a little bit for the introduction of my vampire guy but the way that they bring uh straw in there's multiple encounters before the big final because obviously a vampire is too powerful for a couple level three dudes but every time you encounter him he's not trying to kill the party at that moment until much later because so be, how long okay. is curse of strahd how long it's pretty you... long yeah we skipped a lot of it i figured uh but a, my thought we didn't process... have time and yeah, b I, uh, I cut out the stuff that i didn't think would fit what i was trying to do yeah it flew it flew what is the word i'm trying to look for here together know. well it oh flows meshed? Yeah. meshed i don't know flow, that, flow works that yeah place. yeah like a river but i said flu flu <laughs> so amber simple is my favorite though i love the amber Temple. that was yeah it was fun except for certain things i did tweak that a little bit too but it's besides the point it, it, that's the, i think it's the biggest if you take anything away from this podcast tweak things yeah i like tweaking absolutely so i, was, I mean we could do a series on how to make a good one shot and look yeah. at a bunch of encapsulated adventures for the first couple of episodes and then kind of branch off and we could even dissect specific modules yeah we could do that as well so many or, ideas yeah and right now i'm just kind of trying to think of you know how we could turn that into a series because i do like it a lot so i i really enjoy the idea of trying to make a good villain which is yeah. kind of a, a section of maybe one shots and and series like that well, they're a little bit different because one shot, the one shot villain is much more contained than like a yes, an arc villain. So I think because that's one shots are probably something for a lot of people that are getting into D and D that they will do I think it's rather started. than jumping straight into a campaign. So I think that might be a good follow up to the series that we did in the beginning is how to create a good one shot because mm -hmm. it is a craft of its own. It's hard. Yeah, it's uh, when I can't our, do it. <laughs> when our friend uh, Daniel was creating a one shot for us. He kept, I remember t typing in the chat saying, I'm sorry for this, I'm sorry for that. I was like, I'm sorry for being railroady. Because I was like, a one shot's a completely different beast than, I mean, well, it he kind was of messaging has you during be. the one shot? No, no, I mean, like before the game, he was posting in our chat. Like, one shots are inherently a different beast. Obviously, there are kind of open world one shots, but those are a little harder for There's people to harder. grasp into. Yeah. It kind of has to have uh, like a book, a rising action and a falling, a resolution to make it a con a cohesive one shot for people to enjoy so well then yeah i think that's a good idea let's do that next where we talk about certain one shot modules and kind of go yeah, into how to make of, your own i mean a lot of the modules that i bring into our game and kind of like steal and change and whatnot are basically considered i guess one shot modules and you can definitely grab them and tweak them and change them yeah and it's a great one shots they're a great way for you to kind of piece together a campaign if you're not sure what's mm -hmm. going on i mean a large campaign if it's episodic in style or if it's continuous i mean you can always use what you learn through doing a one shot 
and how to navigate through them in a campaign. Or you can always, if I mean, we do this whenever I can't do a session or I was not a little prep and I give you guys enough time, then or we miss a a player is missing, etc. And we can have someone else run a one shot, give the DM a break, or the DM can run a side shot, a side one shot that takes place in the same world or it takes place in a certain event that the players have heard about, just to add some more coolness, cool factor to the world. Yeah, and kind of the thing that I love is we still, and recently we kind of did, I've forgotten his name, so it's kind of bad because I think he's listening all the time. Uh, well, we ran <laughs> like a, a side one shot and it's still affecting our campaign to this day. He showed up and he's like, you guys said you'd do this and this for me. You have not yet. Oh. What's going on? Yeah. You know the guy I'm talking about. Yeah, first, I thought you were talking about like a person, like a living person. I was like, who did we have? Oh. No, no, no. I, yeah, yeah, whenever one game. of our players is gone, we went into some sort of weird mansion. Yes. Yeah, that. Yes. So I think learning about one shots would be a great thing for a new DM. Hi, JD. Yeah, I hope that. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Getting there a cat's also is. a good idea. Great JD idea. JD likes it. Yeah, I, like so, yeah, it. I think so that's a good idea. I'll write that yeah. down too. And for doing series, that could kind of feed into the, excuse me, having episodes prepped beforehand. Because if we have a series, it's really easy to plan the next couple of episodes. Oh, yeah. Makes it easier on us. Yeah. It can change depending on, you know, we've got a list of do this episode and then, you know, the follow-up one to this will be this entitled that. Yeah. Once you finish something, sometimes it throws it all to shit, plans it. It can. It can. Okay. So series getting more ahead of ourselves social media is the biggest thing i don't think i'll ever be good at it <laughs> mostly because of how i live my life and touching back on that dedicating a lot of time to one thing mm -hmm. reason i love the podcast is it's pretty much just me and ryan chatting and continuing our friendship as we now live separately outside yeah. of just D D. so that's what's fun about it um and there's not really a massive amount of time commitment that we have to do to it it's just you know the hour or so that we chat let me, tell, we let me tell you what i've been thinking about what have you been thinking about so this this might be a little bit farther off but in the next year in 2020 2020 is gonna be a huge year hey ryan slow down there i don't want to talk about what's happening next year i don't have 2020 vision whoa that's gonna be a huge year for the podcast a giant year i'm uh, so proud of myself for that sorry <laughs> let me live in that a little bit what what I was thinking uh, when I mentioned diversifying our content, I think it'd be cool to, we could stream ourselves doing dungeon crawl based ideas. We could do one shots with other streamers, friends, et cetera, and stream that. And then maybe even have it in podcast form and post it just different ways to continue the dungeon crawl idea. I don't know. I would love to it'd be but fun. implementing that. How do we do it? That's what I'm saying. That's why we got a, a year mm -hmm. to figure it out. No, we don't have a year to figure it out. We've got no. <laughs> the coming weeks to figure it out for next year. No, I mean, we can figure it out in a few months of the year. <laughs> yeah. My let problem say is... As, uh, let me say, as, as a content creator, it's important to diversify and do different things. If you just do the same stuff, then you're just going to die. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> put plain and simple, yeah, probably. So, I mean, I'm looking at our Buzzsprout now, and not to, like, throw out our analytics at all, because I don't think I'll dive into the numbers, but we've been pretty consistent with how long our episodes are. You know, we mm -hmm. got an odd, like, character creation was 71 minutes, which I think was our longest episode. Yeah, we, we just got, kept going. Yeah, it was a good one. I um, mean, we've been pretty consistently growing in terms of our view, but, of course, episodes will get more views as they yeah. live on the internet. I mean, if you guys longer. have any specific ideas for things you want to hear, please send us an email, a tweet, whatever. I mean, speaking of emails, I mean, even the the um, lovely listener that we had sent in a question, I think, not, was it last week that we answered it? Yeah. No. Yeah. Yes. No? No? Yes. Yeah. No, it wasn't. No. No, because you were here, and I don't think we covered it last week. <laughs> I don't remember. It's um, tough, man. But he sent us another email just kind of outlining that he um, was thankful for the advice, but uh, unfortunately hasn't been able to. Sorry, this is this is Carcer. Send us on Gmail. Let me start off with that. Um, thank but he said, you, thank Carcer. you so much for the advice uh, on the sailing quest. Unfortunately, we have not been able to get much more of the sailing done due to player absences, which I'm sorry to hear that. Um, but he's been dealing with it pretty well by throwing in a new, fresh idea um, and diversifying his D&D &D content with his friends um, by playing some sort of 
D and D Pokemon thing or Digimon, but mostly Pokemon because it's Dungeon Mon. He called it. <laughs> yeah, which is it's really like cool. Having different monsters brawl out with each other. I mean, I've yeah. heard similar things for player wise, where it's just a big brawl between players, and you just rank it when up to like level twenty or something, get some crazy magic items, just go ham for like four hours. I feel like that's like playing Magic: The Gathering, where you're playing with two <laughs> players, where neither of them know any card, and you have to explain everything. I mean, if anyone knows what they're doing. If you gave me a level 20 anything, even a warlock, I would have to look up things a lot. Well, I wouldn't just give it to you. You'd have a whole week to figure it out. You, you think I'm going to look at and it? And I would, I would, it would I, I, we'd all be playing. I'd be playing, I guess. Maybe. That sounds cool. But yeah, he, he had this really great idea. Um, and he said it's, it was a way for him to diversify the monsters and creatures yeah. that he got to play with. Which again um, brings up the diving into monster manual and just t- talking about that type of stuff. Cause there's some monsters that I feel like don't get the love they deserve. No. And a lot of our friends did say that they really enjoyed the, um, the hags episode and the Noel yeah. episode. I like they talking were really about fun. monsters. And those They're are, the, those are more, sure. well, yeah, but those are more, the two that we've covered already are kind of the more big, I guess Noel's, I mean, you hated, you thought Noel's were stupid before we covered them. And I, maybe a lot of people do as well. Uh, but those are still, even still, if you hate Noel's, you probably know what a Noel is. I, I like to kind of go into the more the background monsters. Noel. Yeah, the unknown guys. The ones that, yeah. the unsung heroes, villains. Brian's always been pretty interested in monsters and used kind of quirky ones because he just sits down and reads it on his spare time. That's, that's, that's how I started getting better at it. That's what made me want to think about doing stuff like this is just going into the book page by page, writing down the lore that was applicable to my world and then writing down plot hooks for them even if they didn't make sense like in our current campaigns writing down plot hooks like i could have this guy do this i could have this guy do this that guy do this and it's just fun so i'm looking at ryan and with how he is in discord there's a lot of blackness around him black like, in just discord usually and then you know the video starts because you see yeah, the, in the void huh? but it's just him in a void right now and it's kind of <laughs> great um I mean, it could be fun i guess uh if you want to let us know you don't have to but we might do this anyway it could be fun to even do a live podcast do it on twitch just chat you know and have yeah. our, our cams on and be like yo what's up play us what i think we'll do is because ryan's always wary of not being distracted during uh, content creation especially live content creation it could be a to us right now like this is extra live. yeah it yeah. could be an extra little do that so, so i don't think we i would read the chat occasionally just because i get distracted and look mm-hmm. um but we would probably structure it to where we would have times where we particularly have people ask questions sure um, and then we would take a look, like, probably halfway through. But I wanted to touch on one more thing that Carcer said in his PS, his post-script. Whoa. If you, never underst- if you didn't know what PS meant, now you do. It's post-script. After the script. meant polys. I don't know. I got nothing. I'll let you live with that for a little bit. Hold on. Yeah, I thought I was going to have a fun joke, but I'm like, <laughs> I couldn't grab anything. Uh, but he said, PS, um, you know, essentially, if you'd have me, he'd love to come on the podcast or just chat with us about... Um, awesome plans he has about his upcoming campaign and that is something since the beginning that i have wanted to do with the podcast is interviewing dms about things that are going on or just depending on whatever series we're in but it's tough to do that until we can get consistent people on the podcast yeah um and have a decent little following because otherwise um it can be tough to have that be a consistent aspect of the podcast but it's something that I am most interested. I think I mean, Ryan at least, presented. At least what we're going off of, uh, we're working on getting our po- or not our podcast, our Discord all set up so you lovely gents can hop on in with us and just chat with us in general. Uh, we should be getting that out for this. For this, once this episode is out, it should be available to join. We'll post that on our Twitter, and we'll I'll, I'll put in the description as well of this episode the invite which is a little tough because I don't know if you really click the link anywhere, but just go to our Twitter, go to our stuff like that, and you should be able to find it. Yeah, and I was thinking, you know, some ideas I had for the Discord because it's pretty easy to create. Um, a section where you all cannot read, but you can submit questions, and it just kind of goes into the void from your perspective, but we're able to the look void. at the catalog of stuff. Um, places for you guys to chat, um, probably links to both of our streams. Just creating kind of a general, I mean, a lot of you have probably been in Discord servers and know the typical stuff that you see, but we've already got this dungeon crawl um, 
server that me and Ryan use whenever we used to chat in a um, voice channel, but now we're using video, so we have to do a, mm. a call. Um, but we've got a bot in there. I um, just figured Discord is both a platform that is a platform that both me and Ryan really enjoy, so why not throw it in there, you know, courtesy of yeah. Mercer, kind of bring it to our attention last time. So I'll, I'll appreciate that there. Heck yeah, I'm looking forward to getting it going. Yeah. So if we ended up starting to interview people, Ryan, how mm-hmm. would we make it more diverse? How would we make it more than just adding another person into the podcast that is putting their voice into the, the microphone? I mean, it could be somebody who has a podcast, so they have something to talk about as well, or specific topics that they're passionate about. Something they love, to, something they like. Maybe we could find some guy who's because I mean, we're both role player dudes. We could find someone who's more of a combat centric person and talk to them about what, why they prefer the combat over role play. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You know what I think could be interesting. What I do you just, think? No, I don't. But if oh. I did, I would have thought yeah? this. Okay. Getting somebody who works at is a manager or owns a game store. Oh. And either helping them promote their store or talking to them about how they run it and how yeah. D&D impacts their store. Do I can just walk it? into the, my local game stores and be like, hey, I run a podcast. Can I interview you? I mean, yeah, that's what people do. Like, and, uh, you know, if I mm-hmm. still lived there, or mm-hmm. even, freaking heck, our friend Kenneth, who goes freaking to all heck. of them around uh, Denton, you can know, he could walk in. He, yeah, he goes there all the time, and he could, um, you know, reach out for us and say, hey, my friends are doing a podcast, and, yeah, I come here all the time, but I would love to, you know, see if you'd be interested in joining their podcast and talking about the game store and D&D and how that kind of moves into your flow outside of things like Magic the Gathering. Or as the cool know. kids call it, the LGS, your local game store. I don't think the cool kids call it that, right? Well, who calls it that then? I hear that people say LGS. Maybe it's more hmm. of a magic term. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if people I've say it. That. People say it. I, me, I was just watching the magic tournament and people were saying LGS. So Trust Ryan just me. basically tried to call himself a cool kid. I am a pro. I, I mean, I, you said it, not me, you know. Don't put words in my mouth. <laughs> but it, interviews are something that I've always, always wanted to do. But Ryan posed that it's important for me and him to kind of set up just the our report. precedent. Yeah, that it's us. Yeah. 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 yeah in the beginning. Um, you know, though at first I was like, ah, oh, but you know, really when you're studying a podcast, it's important to have, you know, just you. Yeah, the faces, you know, well, get attached to some people. You don't see our faces all the time. Hey, we're on the, we're on the artwork. That's me and you. I'm on the I right, love that you're on the left. I so much. <laughs> I think it's Rosie Whiteart that did that. Who? I want Which one? On. I want to, I want to give them a shout Depends out. on the, who you're talking, which artwork you're talking I about. I love them both, but the, the icon is one of my favorite. Oh, the icon. I think they're both amazing, but I just really think the little icon. That's oh, Fawn. What was her? Yeah, name? that sounds right. Uh, I think her at is tired and blue. Yes, that's definitely it. One, I'm not sure. Um, but if you've ever felt like going on Instagram and looking up tired and blue, or Fawn Taylor, um, her art's really great. The other one was Bruno. Yeah, Bruno's a cool guy. <laughs> his internet was wonky, but his little but picture. Look at the look little at picture? The work. It's a yeah. It's a little sloth in armor. <laughs> but look at the work that he that he put out for us fantastic i like podcasts change their art a lot because it's fun but honestly i'm going to be very partial to these two for a long time yeah i like not them. just because we paid for them i mean the weird thing is do you remember the other names that we had kind of considered before we decided on the dungeon crawl vaguely i have a list of them actually right in front of me if you want to hear yeah. it real quick yeah let's go through behind the scenes of how terrible <laughs> my ideas were and maybe and maybe there's a better one here that you guys probably wish that we had chosen. Podcast of the Mind. Uh, big Bad Evil Podcast. So that, that was a big one we were considering for a bit. Yeah. Uh, the Adventurers Podcast. Eldritch Podcast. That was a little too niche, though. Comprehend Languages. I know what you're thinking, but do not mention it. Expeditious Trin- Retreat. <laughs> Find Familiar. This If you can get the idea, I just started going down the spell list and finding ones that might fit a podcast uh good berry and vicious mockery i thought that might be a little too intense so we decided not on vicious i mockery. think the big bad evil podcast i love it so much <laughs> i 
I kind of regret not using it, but it doesn't really say what. Yeah, I mean, it kind of blew about. my mind when Dungeon Crawl was not taken by anybody. That's such a generic name. I like it. No, yeah, I love it. I just, I'm just surprised. That's why we ended up deciding on it because I, mean, I have no idea how this was never chosen by anybody before. Right. So since you brought up the name, I had this thought like uh, a couple of minutes ago as we've been recording it. Mm -hmm. um, but do you think you'll ever feel tied down by our choice of name? No, I you, like it. I do too. You've been, since the beginning, starting to, like the first time you did this, asking me questions that wasn't about the topic that we were talking about really threw me off guard that first time. And you can probably find it. You said like, <laughs> hey, we were at the end of the podcast. And I think we kind of ran out of stuff to you know, talk about because we, you know, efficiently talked about our topic and we said braxton what do you what do you what have you been doing i was just trying to how have you been? see and how he's like, been what? like I, I paused for a second because i, was like, I care he, he's just so used to me not caring i guess that means i'm <laughs> a bad friend i mean you can talk we can talk about that stuff out of the podcast but i just thought it was so interesting that you brought that up oh sorry uh, i just bit, 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 bumped the mic blew off your ears um but it's so interesting to me because i think one of the last couple of podcasts both of them maybe i've talked about video games and um other stuff of that nature yeah stuff I mean, there's really a lot of overlap with dnd &D. there is a lot especially with skyrim Ooh. check the skyrim box for this episode though i don't know i i feel like not that we have a massive following but would people be like you know this is a dnd &D podcast why are they talking about other stuff I don't know. I mean, we even have in our, I mean, it does say D and D related topics, but I mean, like I said, I feel like we've hit most of the, I think most things we talk about are D and D related topics. Yeah. We do waffle, but I mean, they're still usually come from somewhere. Yeah. And I am very open about throwing other pop culture. Oh, media yeah. Into, into the podcast. I we can even become the dungeon, the dungeons and dragons and pop culture podcast. I mean, there's another podcast. I like giving shout outs to podcasts I listen to. There's a podcast called Think Twice that is a magic centric podcast, but in like the last 20 minutes, they'll talk about what movie they watch. Like they'll both watch a movie and then talk about that or what TV show they were watching. They're thinking and... twice once about DC <laughs> or magic. And then... <laughs> Think twice, hire me as your PR guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, that's, I, I like stuff like that. We kind of already do that where we'll talk well, about something for a I while. Like then we'll just kind of not only get is it. Off. Dungeon crawling through D and D, but maybe also through life or other topics. Oh, I mean, sometimes going through life is like a dungeon crawl. Hence the name. Damn, getting deep over here. It's that's crazy. It's been well, speaking fun. of deep, I got a question for you, Braxton. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to be so hesitant. Uh, <laughs> Your questions are, kind of come out of left field sometimes. Well, here's one out of right field. Oh shit! That's even more unheard of. <laughs> now I'm double surprised. How how do you think D and D has impacted your life since you've been involved? With it? I, I mean, did you want to play before I invited you to play? So and this was like what three years ago, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can still visualize like getting that text mm -hmm. in my brain, um, in the phone that I had. Had you listened to the Adventure Zone by that point? Or did you get into it after the fact? I think I was already listening to it. I think so. And, you know, I, I grew up doing theater, and a lot of my friends were like, yeah, we're doing D&D. &D. I had one of one of my friends named Jace, uh, who um, is... Shout out. Yeah, shout out to Jace. I won't give his last name because that would be rude. But uh, <laughs> he was always one of my favorite people. And I think he's still doing uh, school right now and, and going pretty far in theater. I actually just saw his headshot show up on Instagram. They looked pretty good. Good job, Jace. Um, and I think he ran D and D for a lot of his friends at that point. I, I was so, so confused about, it. I don't really know what it is. And it seems like, why would this be fun? So I've always kind of known about it. And since a lot of my nerd friends have played it or known about it, you know, as I grew up, I think I was just kind of primed to say yes, because Ryan was one of my good friends at the time. I think we weren't really talking, but yeah. still a good friend. Um, and he mentioned it. So I was just kind of poised to say yes, because of the, the adventure zone and, other things that have just made me interested into it. Um, and the, then the topic of has it changed my life? I mean, flat out, yeah, it's given me more friends and me and Ryan are now creating a podcast because of it. So 
Yeah, that. I mean, that and we've those created stories things. together. Yeah. Yeah, those are the most obvious things. It's it's given me a facet to, or an outlet to kind of act, which express I don't, yourself. Yeah, I don't really do anymore. I love theater, but as a result of me just kind of meandering through life, taking the lowest hanging fruit, <laughs> um, being very lazy, I haven't gone out and tried to do. I mean, that's I. If we're self reflecting right now, DM, I do. You're DM though. You're DM. That's not really lazy. But the way I do it is lazy, <laughs> good, but lazy. I, I don't do the, know. I would hesitate to say. Well, we can we can have a therapy session later. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it it has. I mean, it's nothing would but you a positive say experience. A, would you say there's a lot of yourself in the characters that you play and <laughs> the and the and the DMing that you do? Do you do you put a lot of who you are into that? Yeah, it's hard to remove yourself. That's a difficult part of acting. And for mm -hmm. both characters that I spent a lot of time with, uh, I'm very true to how I play video games. Uh, and I've talked about this before where video games don't challenge you to role play, really, because it does it for you. Yeah. Either yeah. through the dialogue or something you like that. You get the bad option, the good option, neutral option. Mm -hmm. Either that or you can do every option in a video game because there's completionists and if they didn't allow you to people would get upset so it's hard to truly role play a character and not do things that they wouldn't do so when i'm playing these characters yeah i would say that i i role play myself but i'm trying to get away from the completionist aspect and wanting to open up every option and really play them <laughs> as that character yeah, there's no saves coming you can't open up no. another save you're done yeah consequences so I think it's made me like I wouldn't be able to DM if I hadn't played for so long. It'd be tough, and you know, having that perspective of of um, yeah, it was definitely hard. The player's mind tough yeah. for me getting started because I'd never played before. Nobody wanted to DM. I was like, okay, I guess I'll give it a shot. And yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a learning experience. I mean, the world that he's made is insane. I know for like the fact it's affected your life because you yeah. like, breathe and eat it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I had, I, mean, a, I had a dream the other day that I was inside of it was really weird. That just shows the amount of <laughs> the amount of crap that I was doing. What you in were the inside world. of your world? Yeah, I was inside the world. Were were you a person? Yeah, I was because I'd been working on on the history for so long. I guess at that point, and then I just had a dream where I was the specific moment that I was working. I was like, "This is fantastic!" And I used that as inspiration to finish off my idea. <laughs> Can you not tell me because it's actually in the campaign? Yeah, yeah, it's in there. Ah, uh, <laughs> I can turn my headphones off. You can tell them. It's fine. No, 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 no. No? Because yeah. you don't listen to it. Well, yeah, that's a very literal representation or indicator that it has affected your life. But, I mean, for you, same questions. How has it kind of altered anything in your life? I mean, it's changed. It's uh, it's changed quite a lot in my life. I mean, I, like, so we've only been playing for, like, what, three and a half, three years, something like that? I don't know. <laughs> And it's it's weird to say because you know some people have been playing it for since first edition or since third edition or whatever yeah. for years and years and years and so I'm sure it's affected their life a lot too. But specifically for me, I and I don't know if we've talked this before, but we might have that. I have a lot of anxiety, and a lot of depression stuff that's impacted my life, and that's actually why Braxton and I were we kind of went our separate ways for all just because I had a lot of stuff going on. I was terrible at reaching out, and it's it's a lot of, a lot of stuff. Um, but this was a great way to reach out to people and to hang with people once a week and to help create a world and make cool stories together. And it's just, it's a whole different experience. And then you make these friends that you have these memories with that, I mean, they're not real memories, but they're real to you, you know, like I can vividly explain this, this story. And we talked this on the podcast before the story about this guy who was with the party and then they killed his sister by accident and they all went yeah. out and there was this whole emotional moment. I tell people who aren't involved in that story and like aren't involved in the game, they're like, that's cool, I guess. They don't really understand the impact. But then I talk about it with the guys who were there and they're like, Yeah, that was huge. This is that was a tough moment or it's weird. It's really weird. Because well, you share these memories. That's why they, I love both D D and performance. Because if you're somebody who is able to treat acting and not necessarily being a method actor but any sort of um removing yourself from your reality and playing a different character as a true experience yeah you may be called crazy by some or you may be just a truly empathetic person who can really put yourself in somebody else's yeah, shoes. shoes and i think it both D D 
and performance in any way, shape, or form can treat uh, can um, help you learn how to be more of an empathetic person. You can also really you can also work through things as well because I've I mean like the question I asked you have you put a lot of yourself into since I haven't really played too much and I did a little bit whenever I was a player I kind of put my my own spin on certain aspects of my personality but since I DM I will have stories that I'm inspired by events in my life like if someone I know recently died then I have an arc about a character's death and the things you guys say to them might help might help me or if like if I'm not gonna go super in depth because I don't know how they would want us to one of our players had a a death in their in their like it was a big emotional death in their life and it almost like played out in game and it was a really and like they came to help another person and it was this whole I didn't even it's, realize it's a weird parallel sometimes how D&D can help us work through different events in our life I don't, it's crazy man it's it is crazy world. and crazy world you know, before I really realized, um, I think you know my characters. Even though, yes, I've played both, both of them. I've been a player in both of them. One mm-hmm. or the other isn't just somebody in the backstory. That's why I have a, a deep connection. Number one, that's one reason. Um, they're brothers. So, as we go through the campaign, uh, I'm I'm realizing. I mean, I've got a good relationship with my own brother. So, mm-hmm. you know, am I projecting some of those feelings and, and yeah, maybe just subconsciously? Possibly. Um, Soph is going to come to fruition soon because we're <laughs> on an island to somewhere. I don't think he's there, but it's always so easy whenever Ryan like dangles, oh, your brother's interacting with you in front of your face in the campaign to yeah. genuinely be either excited or scared because you're involved in it for so long. Yeah, you care um, about these events and these people, especially like if you're subconsciously put in the, you know, you might view your own brother in that or in my life, if I put certain NPCs that I recognize as certain people in my life, then it's just, A, that helps me get into their minds because I know this person, but B, it helps create these different situations with the party and different players. It's almost like weird therapy in a way. Uh, there was one post I've seen somewhere that described uh, D&D as helping, as deeming as helping your friends through weird parts of their brains. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I could see that. I mean, everyone I kind of puts their own person in there. In there. Well, really, really player. not getting too in depth on one of these aspects, but one of our players, um, you know, figured something out about themselves recently, and I realized that they were kind of living it out preliminary yeah. in a pre- preliminary way through their character. Um, which is after very cool. This person had brought it up to us, which is a really cool way to kind of dip into it, experience it yourself for a little bit because it's playing D&D. You are that character. And yeah. it was a way for this person to kind of experience what that was like. And I think and, it made them a bit more comfortable with it. Oh, yeah. And as a, as a DM, like you said, working through different parts of people's lives, um, this is, I think, a good example because I, I've, I love Critical for so long. I just haven't watched it because I don't have much time anymore. But... There's a moment in the first campaign. Obviously, I'm not going to spoil anything if you haven't watched it, but it's one of the first campaign. Where there's a lot of stuff going on with one of the players um, outside of the game. And the DM, Matt Mercer, there was an interview where he talked about how he knew this stuff was happening to his friend and he set up certain plot points to try to, I don't know, kind of almost not really mimic, but connect this stuff and make the player feel, I don't know, feel like they were a part of something and able to escape that other parts and feel strong and feel impactful in some way that wasn't connected to all their crap that they're doing with you know in the yeah. real world well, in the same way that therapy tries to make you either brave your fears brace your fears or get connected to an event that happened in your life that you're kind of separated from D D does the same thing if you yeah. have a good group of um people that recognize that you're getting into it. it it's I wouldn't call it literal therapy, but I think in a way it definitely is. And well, you, you know, it's like putting yourself out there. Like I'm going to yeah. talk to this NPC that I've never met before. Mm-hmm. It's really fun. And that's or why really I love video games too. Buddy. Acting is the same way. And it's just all of these things are so much more than something to feel ashamed about when you talk to your normie friends. Like, <laughs> yeah. I play a pen and paper game with dice and role playing. And they're like, what is that? But it's so much more than, well, it's easy to view it as escapism. Like, let's say I'm having a lot of crap in my life. I'm going to play video games or D&D to escape from that. But 
like we just said, it's not really escapism if you're taking that crap and bringing it into the game and working through it. I mean, it's 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 a whole new ball game when you look at it from that perspective. Yeah. And I forgot that we wanted to talk about that this episode, so I'm glad you brought it up. Um, but when we started this, uh, I had always known that you know Ryan's background has always been dealing with a lot of mental health and wanting to help people um, in situations that he's been through. Um, and even that, that comes through in his stream that he does all the time. He's always having um, uh, charity events for it or just trying to raise awareness for Good various... old conversations. Yeah, and I would love to implement more of that into our podcast as well. Being funny, which I'm not all the time, but we try to, um, <laughs> is great. But I love having those serious moments. Um, yeah. I mean, hell, the Adventure Zone is a extremely, extremely comedic focused podcast but as they started going through the first arc of it i i, I cried during the end it was well, you, you can't have any if you're going for any sort of realism in D D, it's impossible to not have those serious moments i mean that's just life you know obviously we're living in a this is a fantasy world with dragons and magic and stuff but life still exists that's why game of thrones was so popular because all these characters granted they're living in this crazy fantasy world with dragons and magic and all this nonsense but there's still people with grounded wills and wants and losses. People are able to connect themselves into those shoes. Yeah. And speaking about this, honestly, I think is the best advice for how to be a better player or be a better DM is understanding that everything in your world is a person, is a place, is a thing. And they all are connected to something else somehow. Even though yeah. I mostly set up a skeleton for my world and then kind of live it organically that way. Fancy talk for improv. Um, <laughs> <laughs> trying to make myself feel better about it. Um, I still think about what a person is thinking about and how they feel. Yeah, what this and person wants. It's very important. What a girl wants. <laughs> okay, good. Glad he knew that one. I can always reference a song <laughs> and Ryan will know it. But if it's Yeah, I know songs, man. I'm a music guy. Yeah. Music is, we still haven't talked about this yet because I think it's really tough to it's implement tough. Yeah. in just one podcast. I think we could do it on stream or something else better, but music is a great way to get connected to your, your inner self and thoughts as it's well. Emotions flowing. Yeah. That's very important. Uh, anything else in that line of thought that you kind of wanted to, to bring up? Um, I don't know. I mean, the podcast has been a great additive to all that as well like i said mm -hmm. just having the place to you know this day we're gonna just hang out and chat for an hour or two and work on other crap uh it's it's been nice to just like not really escape but kind of escape and find a cool topic to waffle yeah. about for a little bit yeah i'm very surface level with a lot of the things i enjoy and being able to sit down and really think about it for a minute and having somebody else to keep me accountable for it. It's like having a workout partner. It's like, hey, we're going to do this so we can stick to it. Um, thankfully, I don't dread recording a podcast like I would dread working out. Um, no, but even if I worked out, it, you those always... endorphins start flowing, man. Yeah. I mean, same thing. By the end of it, you're either dead, tired, or you're sore. But for me, soreness, I love it because it means I know I, uh, you know, did some work that yeah, I, you did I, something, I right? And, yeah, I'm a weird guy. I like feeling sore. <laughs> uh, but this is... Uh, Maybe in a little short here. Well, I was thinking, and I, don't know, I can hear you, your thoughts on this and maybe what the people's thoughts are. I meant to mention this earlier when we are talking about diversifying content. I didn't even think about it. Since I'm out of school now, I'm thinking about sometime the next year getting in. And we talked about this briefly at, about, on the last part about DMs Guild. I have Guild. no idea where this is going. Hold on. <laughs> We're talking about DMs Guild and stuff. I've been thinking about writing my own modules and stuff. Like one shots and things. I think that'd be really cool. Ah, <laughs> that'd be tons of fun. I could put them up on DMs Guild and see. Hopefully, people enjoy them. I don't know. Yeah, that could be really cool. And we could give little samplers on uh, like streams or something. Yeah, we could run. We could run through them and see how crappy they are. Yeah, that's a. Yeah, you're about to get a lot of extra time though. Grad school may be right around the corner for you. Yeah, I'm gonna take a semester off, but I still gotta, I guess, like do GRE and whatnot, but. Yeah, I'm gonna, That's I'm gonna so give it a shot because you've never been really out of school yet. Ever. Yeah, I mean you've had summers, but it's definitely a weird experience, Ryan. I'll, I'll give it to you there. <laughs> um, well, because I, I, I mean I do so many of the 
kind of similar. I could take what a, some of the stuff we've done in our game and just transfer it over to writing form. So that would make sense to everybody. We did bring that up before Boom. with um with Daniel because you guys have been in a creative writing class together, and you know I yeah. love having my my finger and everything just because I enjoy what we do. Um, but that could be something really fun to do. I think could be fun, and you could brand it as the dungeon crawl. The dungeon crawl. Please check out our podcast. Please. We talked about this a while ago. <laughs> yeah, that could be a really cool idea. I think that's a, a good way to kind of finally say, you know, I'm getting out in the world. Let's put my mark yeah. on it and make some I things. like writing and I like D&D and I've, I mean, I've used so many modules in the past. It could be a good way to I mean, to if anybody back can to the world. do that, it's definitely you. For me, I'm well, sticking to something like that and making sure it's got <laughs> a very concrete setup, takes care of everything, could be tough for me specifically yeah it's got i think it could also be good it might be a good way for us to we could even try to find some guys who write these modules and get them on the podcast and talk to them about it like yeah. what you need to if you what if you're going to make a module what needs to go inside of it yep that would be cool fun we'll things man like you i know, said I, 2020 is going to be a big ass year big ass year an ass year a big you know, ass got, at this point over a thousand fingers have pressed the play button on our Whoa. podcast it's a lot of fingers it's a lot of fingers it's fun to think about and you know weekly there's like near 80 or so of you that wonderfully and i thank you so much for listening to our podcast we do literally <laughs> no pr no advertising <laughs> no done a little bit some yeah we post on reddit once yeah <laughs> I think it's cool that relatively organically we've... Yeah, it's like people are spreading it. I appreciate it. If you haven't, tell your friends to check us out. Yeah, tell them to go on iTunes or Apple Podcasts. And it's the same thing. Give us give give us some... Or Spotify. Give us some stars. Or Google. Or Google oh, yeah, iTunes. Yeah, five stars would be great. But it's been fun. Uh, this is actually our last episode ever. We're done. No, no. <laughs> I'm kidding. We're not done. But thank Good. you. Thank you oh so much for listening to us every week waffle about random things sometimes yeah. waffling more than more than usual we'll probably be diving into some more unearth arcana next week for trying to hopefully finish <laughs> we off that it? well we're getting close we're almost caught up yeah i, I suppose that'd be a good topic to do because you're graduating it's pretty easy to bang that out yeah we just got uh two more and no three jesus Three more, and or two more until we get to that big one that they release, and then we have one more after that. So we're we're almost there. Wait, how many more episodes is that gonna be? Like three, four total. Oh if my we do, god! If we do one for each one. <laughs> so we're changing our name to the Unearthed Arcana Crawl. Well, actually, these because remember the next ones are three. Like the next one we'll be doing is Cleric, Druid, and Wizard. Oh man, we might have to go a little quicker when we do these. Yeah, we'll have to do some time <laughs> management here. That'll be exciting. Oh man, our Unearthed Arcana, Jeremy Crawl. But I've actually looked at any of those, so I'm excited to look at those soon. Oh, what are we gonna do when they release an entire book? Like we didn't even talk about it. <gasps> Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to be picking up Eberron soon, though, so. So then whenever we do that, we can talk about it. Yeah, but you can't see it. You can tell me about it. Yeah, you could maybe you could ask me questions about it, and I'll tell you, yeah, this is the best book I've ever seen. My From what I've seen, it looks pretty sick. Yeah. I'm excited to check it out. I'm also excited to hear about it. All right, friends, this has been The Dungeon Crawl. The I'm Dungeon Braxton. Cruel. Are you Ryan? I am Ryan. I'm always Ryan. There you go. He gave it to Until you. Until I'm not. We will see you guys, or you will hear this on Tuesday. It is currently mm -hmm. a Sunday. Thanks for Take being care. around. <laughs> Take care. I hope you enjoy the holidays whenever or whatever you celebrate, however it happens. Or you take a nice little long rest. No no laugh? Okay. You guys don't have to laugh. I can't hear you anyways. Take care. Love you. See Bye. ya.